In the scripted world of sports entertainment, the lines are constantly blurred between fiction and reality in order to keep the audience guessing. While many things are planned in advance, there's been plenty of times in WWE history when wrestlers have gone off script or things happen outside of WWE's control where they have to adapt and follow. Today, we're going to look at some of the greatest of the cuff moments in WWE history. The legitimacy of this first entry might need to be taken with a grain of salt, but we're including it here because it's incredibly fascinating if it's true. In the 2018 Android the Giant documentary that was co-produced by HBO and the WWE, Hulk Hogan tells the story of the events leading up to the legendary main event match at WrestleMania 3. According to Hogan, when he asked Vince what the plan for the match was, he responded with Ask Andre. When he went to go talk to the giant, Andre responded with Lay out how you think the match should go and I'll see if I like it. Hogan spent days writing out the match on legal pad before turning in his homework to Andre the Giant. Andre simply responded with I'll let you know. Weeks went by and the Hulkster sweated it out. According to Hogan, it wasn't until the two of them got into the ring and Andre started calling out Hogan's sports that Hogan even knew what was going on. Hogan also claims that he originally left the finish open since he didn't know who was supposed to win, and Andre was the one who made a call in the ring for Hogan to go over. While this is a great story, the legitimacy of this story has been questioned. Hogan is the only one to ever talk about it, and Hogan has been known to tell the occasional tall tale. Remember when he supposedly auditioned to play bass for Metallica in the 80s? Neither does Lars Ulrich or any other member of Metallica. On the October 22nd, 2021 episode of SmackDown, Becky Lynch, who was a SmackDown Women's Champion, and Charlotte Flair, the Raw Women's Champion, had been traded to opposite brands. WWE being WWE thought, let's just have the two of them swap titles. In the on-air exchange, the champions were supposed to just hand the belts to each other and be on their way. Charlotte was reportedly not happy with how WWE decided to handle this. When she went to hand her Raw Women's Championship to Becky, she instead threw it on the ground and made Becky pick it up. This was not planned and led to a heated argument between the two of them backstage. The heat from this incident also added a more personal touch to their one-on-one -on -one championship versus champion match at that year's Survivor Series. This next incident is pretty innocent and a good laugh if you've seen the footage. At a SmackDown taping in 1999, the People's Champion was in the ring with Mrs. Foley's baby boy, cutting his usual crowd-pleasing promo. The Rock then whipped his head around a little too fast, accidentally letting his trademark sunglasses fall off and hit the mat. The crowd can be seen cheering at this, knowing that it wasn't supposed to happen. Mick Foley, being a genuinely nice guy, then walked over picked the sunglasses off of the mat and handed them to The Rock. The Rock then put the sunglasses back on his face and can be seen smirking as the crowd cheers this impromptu moment. This next entry is more like a series of moments than just one. From 2013 into early 2014, the man currently known as the American Dragon Brian Danielson and AEW had started to get a crowd behind him with his catchy Yes chant. His entertainment chops as Kane's tag team partner and just being an all-round great wrestler in the ring. This was the guy that WWE fans wanted to get behind to the point that when the 2014 Royal Rumble came around, he was nowhere to be seen in the match. Eventual winner Batista became Bootista as the crowd was clearly unhappy with Daniel Bryan not appearing. This caused WWE to pivot their plans in a way that they normally don't do. With the WrestleMania main event originally planned to be Randy Orton vs Batista for the championship, a storyline was set in place where Daniel Bryan would have to earn his way into the main event of WrestleMania by beating Triple H in the night nice show opener. After defeating Triple H, he would go on to win the Triple Threat main event, creating one of the most iconic WrestleMania moments in the last decade. This next entry wasn't intended to happen and almost killed The Undertaker. In 2010, as he was making his way to the ring for the World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Chamber match, one of the flames from his spiral misfired and burned the dead man. While this incident wasn't caught on broadcast, he can be seen throwing his jacket down and sprinting to the ring. While he's standing in his chamber, he can be seen dousing himself with bottles of water to cool off the burning the best way he possibly can. In interviews since then, 
he stated that he decided to wear a different jacket to the ring that night than what he had previously planned. The jacket he wore was thicker and heavier, which actually provided some extra protection to him when the pyro hit him. Had he decided to not change the jackets that night, we could have witnessed one of the most tragic incidents to happen in wrestling since the death of Owen Hart. Speaking of The Undertaker, the legendary Hell in a Cell match between him and Mankind is not only one of the craziest spectacles in the history of WWE, but is layered with a number of interesting facts. These particular facts we already touched on in our list of shocking cage match finishes, but it bears repeating here. As McFoley and The Undertaker fought at the top of the cell, Undertaker was originally supposed to choke slam Foley on top of the cell, and the roof was supposed to merely buckle. Unfortunately, the rigging that was supposed to allow for this broke, and Mick went through the top of the cell instead. That is why if you look carefully, you can see what looks like broken black zip ties laying in the ring after Foley goes through. Officials, including the legendary Terry Funk, came to the ring immediately as a reaction to this to make sure that Foley didn't die. A bonus of the cough moment here is when the officials are checking on Foley. Terry Funk decides to get in on Undertaker's face and Taker Chuck slams him. In his book, Terry Funk mentions that at the time, he wanted to get a focus off of the officials checking on Foley, so he walked up to Taker and after telling him that Meek was going to be okay, asked the dead man to Chuck slam him to buy everyone some time and distract the audience. On the March 14th, 2016 edition of Raw, Chris Jericho was facing up with Neville in an excellent one-on-one -on -one match. Unfortunately, injuries can happen and Neville ended up breaking his ankle during the match. The problem was that Neville was scheduled to win the match and legitimately couldn't continue to the finish. Referee Charles Robinson tried asking Neville if he was okay but couldn't get a clear response so he kept the match going. Jericho then decided to take matters into his own hands. After a missed three count, Y2J got in the ref's face and started yelling at him. He then choked the ref, causing a disqualification. This allowed Neville to keep his win while not hurting his ankle any further. Jericho later admitted that he wasn't actually mad. He wanted to get the attention off of the hurt Neville and end the match so he could get the help he needed. We'll end this list on a light-hearted note. Anyone who's dived into the world of wrestling butchers probably knows this one. In May 1995, live on an in-your-house pay-per-view, Sid is doing a backstage interview with Jim Ross. While Sid is talking, he flops his line, turning to Jim Ross and saying, Can we do that again? Sid apparently thought this interview was pre-taped and they could just edit his mistake out later. To remind him, good old JR thankfully gave him the now famous line of We're live pal. A clearly flustered seat then awkwardly turns to the camera and continues his promo. That's because he has the half brain that you do. Know of any more great of the cuff moments in WWE history? Post them in the comment section below and maybe we'll do another list. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button. If you want more great wrestling content like this, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified whenever we post a new video.